Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Do It Live Autonomy Podcast. Today I am uh, co-hosting here with some season four students. We got Lee. How you doing, Lee? Oh, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Joshua. Where, where are you uh, tuning in from? I'm tuning in from uh, Taipei, Taiwan, specifically Dan Shui, near the river. Yeah, in, awesome. yeah on the island. And, and uh, is it like three o'clock in the morning or... Uh, it is exactly so. It's 3 4 a.m. Yes. You're a trooper. You're a trooper. And Ludwig, where are you calling in from and how are you doing? Yeah, I'm calling from the uh, uh, Poland uh, headquarters. Yeah. I'm uh, doing great. I, yeah. It's about the same time there, too? No, it's uh, 9 p.m. So it's a great oh, time nice. for some live action. All right. All right. Jason Ross, welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining us. How are you and where are you calling in from? Hey, we're doing pretty good. Calling in from Carbondale, Illinois. Excellent, excellent. So it's a nice, nice afternoon over there. Well, uh, thank you all for joining me today. This is gonna be a, a, a fun, fun uh, walkthrough of this last week. And uh, let's go ahead and just get things started with uh, a recap of, uh, oh, I know where I wanna start. New branding. So Autonomy Unlimited is uh, an extension from the autonomy course. Uh, it was uh, created first conceptually by Richard Grove. And then I learned um, how to make an offer when I went through autonomy myself and I made Richard, the teacher, an offer. Uh, hopefully he couldn't refuse and he took my offer. So uh, me and Richard and his partner, Lisa, all became co-partners to um, Autonomy Unlimited, which is a marketing, um, digital marketing company and consulting company. And uh, we've kind of been running stealth for the our first year. And we just got our branding um, completed. So uh, in the coming months, we're going to be having kind of a rollout where ideally we'll be start putting our broadcasting our, our message and our offers out there into the world. And so uh, we have a, our social media team just went through and created uh, our first Facebook page. Despite how you uh, might ethically feel about Facebook, it is where the people are at. And so as a business, you need to make bus business decisions uh, of uh, putting yourself out there. And uh, I think the branding is like awesome, beautiful. I loved it when I saw it. And now it's really cool to see it starting to roll out in as many forms um, out there. We have updated our courses in Kajabi. And so when you go through your season, all these other courses get opened up to you. Um, we try not to distract you with too many things when you first get there. There's plenty of overwhelm that naturally happens. And so we keep a lot of things behind closed doors. But uh, Autonomy Unlimited Higher Education is what you get access to uh, after you graduate. And uh, there's a ton more resources and real world um, experts in their field sharing how to's, walkthroughs, strategies, methods, uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's a quickly developing um, environment. Lee, you've uh, recently got access to uh, Autonomy Limited Higher Education. What do you think of it back there? I appreciate it. Um, I was um, uh, introduced to the specific page that I needed to start looking at by Lawrence Driggs. And so uh, it introduces what's to be expected. And I think that's necessary because from my own perspective and life experience, <clears throat> I believe and I, I could say and give examples of how a lot of my values and my life choices and decisions are in alignment with the work that I've seen done by Richard, yourself, and many of the people who are part of the autonomy family. But uh, to make sure you're on the same page and to have a introduction or to focus on what Autonomy Unlimited is looking for, I think it's a necessary and useful step. Awesome, I, I do too. It was really cool to just see how this was 
naturally evolved and uh, a place was created where we can all get real world experience. We can sharpen our tools that we already have, share them with others. And this whole thing is like voluntary. We're all choosing to work with one another. And that really just foundationally changes the relationships that you have uh, uh, in, in the world. Because when, when you're forced to be at a job you hate, uh, hanging out with people that you uh, don't align with <laughs> value-wise or principle-wise, uh, it just really can suffocate your natural um, ability to be creative because it you end up not wanting to be vulnerable in those situations, which creativity requires vulnerability in order to try new things, put yourself out there and to fail and learn. And that whole creative process just gets stifled. Would you agree? I have a complete agreement with that. I think you, uh, you mentioned that, that uh, vulnerability and <clears throat> introduced that concept very well. Also too, the importance of definitions, defining things, so the workflow and the interactions and the expectations, it's useful to define those, especially for people who are entering that area, right? Yeah, uh, probably a lot of us can relate of being either solopreneurs or just uh, kind of the black sheep out there and uh, kind of fighting the fight themselves. And to come into a community that are, is, is heading in the direction that you want to be heading, yeah, it's, it's really... Uh, it, it takes some getting used to, right? Trust, got to build some trust with those around you. Uh, but this is a fantastic environment in order to do so. And then just start reaping the benefits and rewards of having a community uh, while uh, maintaining your own individuality. Give you a little sneak peek of uh, behind the curtain in Autonomy Unlimited Higher Education. Uh, this is an ongoing course where that we are developing and these topics are just getting, uh, continued to get developed and fleshed out. Uh, this is just the front page and we probably are at like page six or seven now with just different topics. And then I asked uh, Kajabi who is a, a partner of ours and the software that we do our course management with, I asked them, hey, how, what's our like upload limit? How much like content can we put here? And they said, unlimited. I was like, we're going to test that because uh, we constantly are just putting out new content like every day here in the community. Uh, we're, we're all learning. We're all recording what we're doing while we're learning. And so just being have having a place to storehouse this information is extremely valuable to uh, the community, but also, yeah, we're able to create this like a living library. So this is really awesome. And uh, I'm really looking forward to all the new students who are uh, joining us back there. We have a fresh new um, list of apprentices that are in their feet wet. And yeah, this is where I can kind of show you a little sneak peek of- That's what you want to hear, right? From Kajabi, like unlimited. <laughs> yeah, long, uh, autonomy unlimited, right? Yeah. I had a- the image in my mind of the movie uh, 300 where the king leonidas is like we put that to the test so that's what you're gonna do right you're like you <laughs> somebody we need a meme we need a meme all right well we're gonna kind of jump into the timeline of this last week a lot happened there's a lot going on a uh, little bit of space was created too because uh parhesia wrapped up benny wills Shout out to Benny Wills and Sonia. They just had their baby, uh, a beautiful little baby. <laughs> and so uh, we got a little heads up when they didn't make it to their weekly meeting uh, to talk about their businesses. So we knew something was in the air. And then, yeah, not too long later. Yeah, we got the good news. So that's really, really exciting. Uh, and Parhesia, the public speaking, the art of public speaking course that Benny Wills has put together and we have supported that project is essentially done. There's like a couple like uh, welcome emails that we got to put uh, put together, but look out for the announcement of, uh, of that course on Benny's channel, bennywills.com uh, is where you can go to the website and uh, check out our website handiwork, but also, yeah, that special announcement coming out. With what an exciting time for him and oh, his man. new family. 
like getting married, being in love with a woman, having a relationship. Yes, these are important things, but when the child, the first child is born, the, then the family really is, in my, my experience, because that happened for myself, maybe you could for yourself also, that's when the family is real, right? Oh, when man. God has said, uh, what, is, what is the quote from Tagore, right? Every child born is a sign that God has not yet given up on, on mankind, mm. right? Humankind. So and, and, he got the stamp of God's approval. <laughs> Here's your child. <laughs> Go forth and be awesome. It's extremely transformative. And yeah, that like, I didn't understand like the importance of a family unit until it really having a kid. And, and, and how, yeah, just how, how much value that solidity provides to the community and society as a whole. Uh, and yeah, just, and uh, I would do anything for, for my kid. And uh, it, it's, it, it is, it's, it's just completely flips your perspective of the world from being just someone that's experiencing reality to then like teaching someone else how to experience uh, reality is, is just a trip to transition to. So would you really say excited. you also learned a lot from being a father? <clears throat> oh man, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't stop. And, and, and like, it really just forces you to examine everything, right? Before you just uh, pass something along to a person with no filters. I mean, you have to examine what, yeah, what, what beliefs you held, what uh, views on the world you had, uh, look out for fallacies that might be, uh, like cobwebs in your mind and you don't want to pass these things on. So yeah, I've, I've become like hyper aware of the words that come out of my mouth, the behavior, the, uh, in, saying what I'm <laughs> sticking to what, like, I believe as like, uh, guidelines for parenting and not just like being all over the place, causing chaos in, in my child's life, even to the point of, uh, like, can you imagine having some like giant walk up to you and be like, we're going now and just like <laughs> pick you up and like <laughs> lock you into the car, right? And you're like, I was just like drawing or I was like engaged in something that I wanted to do. And then you have to always fear this like adult, this giant coming up and ripping you out of your, your, your environment. And so I'm just, I always like give her warning you know, like, hey, we got to do this. Do you want to go with us? Like, give her as much choice as possible. So just, yeah, just little things like yeah, that. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I, I totally in agreement with you there. I Just now, my daughter was using the, this um, large screen TV. I, I just put my hand on her shoulder. She pauses what she's doing. She looks at me, what's up? And then I tell her I, I'm going to be working with uh, Do It Live. And someone, someone, I can't remember who, but she's a well-known uh, child psychologist, perhaps. And she said, yeah, you don't call or scream or yell. Go and collect your children. They want to be collected. They want mm -hmm. to come once again within the circle of your arms, right? And yeah. my answer for anyone who asks me, do you have kids? I always reply, I have, currently I have no goats, but I do have children. <laughs> <laughs> children, that's awesome. Yeah, the whole like, are they your property? Do you own yes. them? Yeah, like, like, yeah, there's a lot to explore there. Uh, maybe we'll have Benny on sometime and, and, and talk about that on his new journey. So along with uh, wrapping up Parhesia, which frees up our schedule for a new like project presentation uh, on the calendar, we also wrapped up last week the holistic self-assessment with um, Rose. And man, I, I was trying to follow up after the completion of this and to get him on the calendar to talk about next steps to talk working with Autonomy Unlimited. We've been helping him out, not only with uh, getting this course created, but also um, we've, we've uh, been supporting him doing his the Conscious Resistance newsletter, which is more important than ever now. But I woke up this morning and uh, I just solidified a meeting with him next Wednesday to talk about content safe and backing up his content and helping him with distribution and woke up today and his YouTube channel is gone. 5 million views gone, 2000 videos gone. Like if you search, you, you like won't even, there's no even reminiscence of his channel anymore. So um, do you have a backup? I, I, would, I would hope that he has a backup, but I think that content safe was already monitoring his, uh, his content. So 
we're going to have a conversation and, and talk about past moving forward because this is why Content Safe was born uh, to be able to back up content creators so that they don't have to fear, you know, being uh, censored and uh, deleted with no warnings. But uh, they, they have strategies and plans in place for when that happens because day by day, uh, the YouTube gods are uh, just casting people out of out of their domain. So uh, yeah, we'll be talking to him next. You just week. put in mind some copy for content safe, and and if if they were monitoring him, um, because he is definitely someone worthy of uh, of uh, paying attention to. I was I watched his his two last videos on library, l b r y dot t t v, and uh, I found it interesting, and. He wanted to remind people of some particular information that he felt was was being uh, glossed over or ignored, um, and so there's certain information, certain stories that really do deserve people's attention. And he himself clearly, you know, wishes to highlight that for those who are following him, his channel there. And also, he's got, like you mentioned, his his website. Uh, also, as you mentioned, his his series, right? Uh, the uh, holistic self assessment says it. I can't couldn't say it more. And uh, yeah, happy to support him too by doing some descriptions for his uh, his videos. Um, hi, did you know that Derek was deplatformed off of YouTube yesterday? Yeah, we were just talking about that. Yeah, I, I woke up to that today, and and I just yeah. I, I was trying to get him on a on a meeting with us on Wednesday, three days ago. Yeah, and, and then he didn't get back to me in time. So our next meeting is on next Wednesday, and then yeah, I woke up to his platform being gone, which just sucks. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, it's um, all hands on deck getting Derek back up. And if, you know, we have resources and I sent him an email and I'll redirect any resources, you know, he needs that we have over there just to help him get back together. So that's Sweet. just uh, putting that out there. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll rope you into next week's uh, meeting just so we can have a good strategy uh, mind brainstorm. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Well, welcome to Do a Live, Leah. Thanks. Great having you here. Thank you. Is this where you do technical troubleshooting also? Nope. Uh, we just, just are, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of that going around, but we are talking about uh, kickstarting te like Tech Tuesday back again. So uh, that is will be kind of just a, a live, a live bring your bring your tech troubles and we'll all troubleshoot and uh, record it and put post it up. Today's uh, Do a Live podcast, so we're just kind of recapping the last week. What was your favorite part of uh, this last week in autonomy? Um, well, I, this past week, I had a few challenges, um, you know, not being completely um, well, and I'm kind of catching up on everything that happened this week. My favorite part of autonomy this week is the team that's working with me. Mm -hmm. And they, they saved me this week because I was able to just say, hey, can you do this? Can you do this? I, I couldn't possibly manage that workload by myself especially having you know gotten backed up four or five days and so it was like the most incredible and amazing thing for everybody just to show up into the, the meeting and say hey what can I do you know so exactly that's what we're working on we're building the Kajabi for the one great work network and it's coming along so well um, and you know everybody who is working on the project is is so amazing and, and so kind and wonderful and it's I just, that's been my favorite, my experience, like what I'm getting out of autonomy at the moment. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still watching the lecture. I think I got about five hours from last night into it. Um, you know, and I, I, I'm absorbing everything that's, that Richard, that you're saying. Um, I do think there's a, a lot of people who have trauma from the educational system you know, that they they have unresolved trauma. And a lot of like the social standards are set up from those institutions and people still behave with those type of ideas. You know, so I think just, you know, in, in addition to unlearning, you know, there's some trauma to be dealt with for that. So that's kind of been on my mind as I go through that course. Mm -hmm. um, but thank you for asking. And just the autonomy people for me are, you know, they're, they're lifesavers right now. So thank you everyone who's helping Mark with, you know, One Great Work Network and everything we're doing, you know. Woohoo! Well, that's fantastic. Well, I'm really grateful. And that, that. Yeah. And that project is a great project. You know, seeing what, uh, what uh, Mark Passio, yourself, and 
the people on your team are offering to the world mm -hmm. and, uh, and the importance that he has placed and the whole, your whole team has placed on getting it right. And when the things are set up correctly, making sure that that's protected, because that's important, right? Sometimes as you maybe are experiencing now, technical things can be very challenging. And when you have a complex system, it get the, the complexity increases and you need that reliability, stability. Maybe she could post her technical issue if it's critical, like right now in the autonomy class chat, maybe someone will pick that ball up. I'd offer to help, but I'm involved right now um, with this yeah, with, that's uh, okay. today's podcast. Yeah. I can, you know, I have a team I can reach out to. Uh, some of you are here now, <laughs> but I'll, I'll wait. And then um, just a couple things. And as far as Kajabi goes, I just pretty much want to build like a thousand Kajabis for every single thing that I know how to do in life. I want to build a Kajabi to teach somebody else how to do it. I'm completely addicted to it. Mm -hmm. And my mind is exploding thinking how many Kajabis can I build in the next, you know, three months, two years, like, yeah. I can't even, I love this platform, it's so amazing. Yeah, because we, when we're born, we, we, uh, we have our bodies, right? And all that, I think of sometimes as a, a child or a, a newborn as a seed in some respects, right? Because all that potential is packed into a tiny space. But when it comes to interacting with human beings, hey, we could really use a kind of manual or help, right, to, to interact with others. Yeah, and you know, just, you know, sometimes people have ideas and you know, they're not like, you don't wanna go out there and you don't, you're not writing the book, but you can teach it in a Kajabi, you know? You can get a lot of information across to people. I mean, just, I'm thinking about the natural law course, you know, how that's gonna look when it gets built into Kaj Kajabi. And then I'm thinking, well, why can't we just have a course for every single thing we wanna teach them? You know, yeah. let's have a course teaching people about moral relativism. Let's have a course teaching people about, you know, just the, the amount of things you can teach somebody with that format is unlimited. It's almost the same amount of work you guys are already putting into productions. And it's just a more bite sizable, like learn at your own pace process for the audience, right? So that they can, they, they're engaged, you know, you're not just pushing play and watching a video on YouTube. You're like, A, you're in a yes. special place. Uh, B, it's it's engaging. It's encouraging you. You see a progress bar, and uh, and and then you can like have comments with other people in, in the in the environment. Yeah, and it expands just having an idea and then creating some type of content. You can add all of these other multimedia into it. You know, here's here's what I'm telling you about. Here's a document, here's a video, here's another thing. And you can line them up in sequential order to support your, the thesis that you're trying to, you know, present to somebody, you know, like you're teaching them at the same time that you're presenting a thesis and they get to completely look at all the evidence themselves. They don't have to take your word for it. Here's the evidence, go ahead. Here's the supporting document, you know? So that's that format. I think it's pretty cool that way. Yeah, and, and Mark was already doing all this with all of his podcasts and I wasn't yep. even aware of all the resources down below that he was spending hours on after the show to put together for make, to make it easy for people to... Uh, to, to, to start their own path on, on knowledge. And just like what you said, Kajabi at least like has a nice little format of being able to deliver that yes. to them so that they, they know where to look for it. It's there and uh, they, can, they can digest See, that. We should have a Kajabi for every single podcast now. Yeah, and, and you can, <laughs> and, and yeah. By the way, you can now, you can get all of the entire podcast series on one flash drive, including the supplemental material. Wow. A lot of people will sit there and try to download piece by piece. Just the, the flash drive has everything on it, every supplemental document. And you can, you know, it's it's like very inexpensive. It's like under 20 bucks. Is I that think. the same as the ARC drive? No, no. The ARC drive is a collection of Mark's research. So it's, you know, thousands of videos, thousands. You guys of, have a bundle for both? For the podcast there, and his arc drive well there we don't sell anything we just give out don't we just give these as gifts for donations but there is no bundle so the other one i want to mention is the mark passio complete one great work drive which has all of mark's work on it so you have three three items you have the arc drive which is a collection of research you, you would not be able it's now two terabytes of information 
Um, and it's very unlikely that you would be able to, in your lifetime, read every single thing on there because it's so, it's so many, so many items. Um, let me see if I can give you that. Wow. that I think it's so more about preserving it for the future. Yeah. You know, so if I if I donated like 300 bucks to get those three items and sent you a hard drive, is that something I can do? So how it's done? How do you guys do well, it? Well, it's a little bit different. OK, for the ARC, we ask people to mail a two terabyte hard drive to Mark. And when you go to the website, you can click a link and there will be instructions that you can download. They're meticulous. They're very meticulous. It's a page of meticulous instructions on how to mail this hard drive in because of all of the pitfalls that Mark has experienced in you know the many years he's been doing this. So you've got to follow these instructions. You've got to pack it properly. you got to use a carrier with insurance, et cetera. You send that to Mark. He downloads everything on that drive and then he mails it back to you. So, you know, he's not selling other people's work. He's just basically downloading. Performing a service. Performing a service, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, people usually put a donation in for that, which is pretty good, you know. And, um, you know, so the ARC drive, it's 26,000 audio files, 9,500 books, and over 3,400 videos. And that's from Mark's own personal archive of research data. Um, and so it was a one terabyte, but ARC 2.0 was just released a few months ago. Now it's two terabytes of data. So that's the procedure for getting the ARC. And if you, are, if you go to oneearthishappening.com, um, you can just click on the gifts tab and you go into a, like a somewhat of a gift shop, donation gift shop, and you can find the Mark Passio One, one Great Work Complete Collection in there. And that has all of Mark's work that he's ever put out, all his interviews, all his podcasts, um, videos, everything. Um, and then you can get the podcasts separately also. You can just get the podcasts on a flash drive. So the One Great Work collection is on a hard drive with a little case. It's very nice. Um, it's very like uh, compact, very state of the art. You know, so that's a really great, um, that's something great that we came up with because you know, there was no, you had to download everything on the internet or buy them individually. So we created that for people to be able to get the whole thing. So every time he creates a new piece of media, it's added to that drive, you know, so it's every time you get it, it's updated, you know, so there's a few ways you can get stuff from Mark. Awesome. Yeah, Thanks. it's becoming more and more clear, like we have to be making these hard backups of everything ourselves. I just got a 12 gig ter or a 12 terabyte hard drive to start just downloading everything I find relevant and not just like sharing a link because quickly these yes. links are going to become uh, uh, broken and uh, rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Hindsight so, is 2020. And had we seen this, had we really, ha ha you know, recognized that they were going to purge all truth media you know, even five years ago, you know, and if we had alerted the general public to start doing this, meaning, you know, awake people, we would probably be a little further ahead. But right now we're kind of scrambling and chasing our tails, trying to archive everything. Some people have had the vision. I know, you know, Richard is a visionary. And, um, you know, I, I think Matthew Raymer was a visionary in his efforts to do that. And, you you know, it's a, this, this network, you know, the, the, the way that this network is coming together to help people do that, you know, it's also very visionary and it's, it's creating, you know, an arc of people. Like these are the people building the arcs that we will all have for, you know, our future generations to be able to um, promote freedom, you know? Yeah. I just learned about a uh, blue disc, dry, uh, blue disc, like a, like a DVD, but they hold 50 gigs of information now. So you can you can make some hard copies on discs that that have much larger capabilities than I remember DVDs or CDs in the past and like bury those things, man. Get those well, things that's like what, in the ground. Yeah, that's what all of the ARC data came from. Mark has everything on disc, wow. and he has a library of discs that he's you know, and he he just oh, it's like a whole bookcase full of them. That he, he just opened up and started deciding he has more than what's on that arc he could do several arcs with the data he has but he you know had to select what to put on there wow. um you know
you know, so there, there's a lot more than that, you know, and so that's always going to be growing. Um, but, you know, you also don't forget to have a backup of your backup, you know, because even if you, had, and also take one off your location, if something were to ever happen, you know, when your things were taken away, have a backup of everything you've ever done somewhere else, you know, because I know somebody that that happened to where their computer was stolen, their hard drives were stolen, they lost everything they ever had in their life. So it's, a, and you know, that's what we did at Warner and this happening. We, we backed it up and we put it in a safe off, off location. So, you know, it's, it seems like, you know, the data is very fragile. Um, so you do have to keep that, keep that in mind as well. Yeah, yeah, I think we are not taking uh, this thing seriously enough. I think they are being really easy on us. And yeah, we don't want to get caught with our pants off when they actually pull the trigger. Because yeah, think... they can do so many, so much stuff more than just... Uh... Yeah, I mean, I think we already are walking around without our pants on, all of us, because look what they've done to us. And, you know, it's just people are just now realizing I've got to get into the fight. Like, this is a war. This is a war. You you know, we're, in, we're enslaved right now. They own our bodies. They own our minds. They're trying to own our souls. You know, everything they do to us is duress. It's oppression, you know, and what we have, we're trying to fight back with consciousness and enlightenment for now. That there are many aspects to getting prepared for this, you know. And right now, if somebody isn't actively trying to contribute to this fight right now, you know, they're basically part of the other side. If you're not fighting, you're on the other team because we need everybody to be doing something right now to wake other people up, spread this information, and fight back against what's happening to the whole world. Like, we're it, we're the resistance. You know, and so, you know, you've got to get on the front lines and let some of the people who've been on the front lines rotate out for a little bit so they don't blow up and melt down. And, you know, after 13 years of, of banging their head against the wall, like, it, you know, as you guys all know, you work very hard and you've been in this for years, but everybody's got to contribute. Everybody has to put their boots on and start marching, you know, against this, this, this worldwide oppression they've got the whole world now you know we gotta take a stand otherwise we're going to be led to the box cars that's I'm right a, i'm a question i'm a question joshua on this topic uh -huh. yeah why does it seem like freedom loving people have to be on the defensive why can't we flip the narrative and put them on the defensive by coming up with a list of questions that put the predators on the defense. It seems like we are the one defending freedom. Why not change the narrative and saying, defend the reason why you want to be a predator? It's almost like freedom loving people have to be defending freedom. And I'm saying freedom is a right. Predatory behavior, why we don't flip the narrative, come up with some questions to say, why are you defending predatory behavior? That's a great point. Too many people are, are uh, arguing about uh, like uh, simple stuff. Uh, basically, what you said, Glaster, uh, like they are on the defensive uh, and they're trying to uh, argument yeah. why I should be free instead of like uh, making it obvious. Yeah, I'm I'm free. Uh, like what you're gonna right. do about? It's like we are on the defensive. I'm saying. Let us switch it. Let us flip it. Put them on the defensive. Like, just ask them the question. The, no, you're the right. Words, but here's the problem. They have the platforms. They've got the television. They've got the mind control. You know, they've got the media. They've got the, the budget. You know, they've got all of the tools at their disposal. And we're just a ragtag fugitive fleet of people trying to post on their platforms. And they're going, sorry, get the heck out. You know, that's why... We, you know, we could write that all day long. We write, we do write that all day long. We pose these questions nonstop and we put them everywhere we can, you know, but we just don't have the, the money, the tools, the platforms that they have. You know, they've got mainstream media and that's where people's minds are right now. I do like the I understand. that you proposed, Blaise, here, because uh, 
as we're defending the reasons why we deserve to be free, they're just keeping us busy as they start putting boxes around us. So I, I, I like I, the attitude shift. I understand that. I understand that, Joshua. I understand that, Lila. My question is, I'm not talking about the media. I'm talking about like when you meet the families. It's almost like when you meet the families, you're on the defensive, like you're defending. Oh, he's weird. He's talking about yeah. um, homeschooling. He's talking about freedom. He's weird. I'm saying, okay, why are you defending predators? Are you weird? You are the one who is weird who loves predators. That I just it's almost like to start there with person interaction and saying, let's come up with some simple question. Just be on the offensive then. Instead of always on the defensive. It's like you go to a family gathering and you say, okay, I'm gonna ask this question. Why do you love predators? Why are you defending predators? Instead of them asking you, okay, why you love freedom? No, freedom is a given. But it's like we constantly have to be defending freedom. It's a brilliant idea, Gleister. Oh, thank you, Rich. I would love to work with some people. Just come up with some questions, just to, some simple questions. Okay, why are you, why are you loving predators? That's just one of the questions that come to mind is I've been thinking about it. Just go on the offensive, go on the intellectual offense, instead of being always on the defense and start with family members and close people around you. Put them on the defensive, let them start thinking. Yeah, that's always very effective to try to wake up your family and such. And that's why it's also very good to have a really great understanding of the principles so that when you do get into those arguments or conversations, you know, you do have them at your disposal to be able to dish out those principles, you know, very smoothly and very properly so that they can't but, defy logic. But but I, what I'm saying, Lila, before you even get to the, the, the logic, just come up with some simple questions that put them on the defensive. Just a simple question that put them on the defensive. Before you get to the logic, have them realize and say they are, they are defending predators. They don't yeah, realize it. Right. I'm, Absolutely, I'm, you're right. I'm experiencing this right now with the US um, election going on and that people are being forced to decide between two predators, which predators right. choose from. And they can't see outside of those two decisions and so I'm, I I could I'm going I'm going to attempt to I'm going to think on this because I'm not even talking to my in-laws right now because it's so divisive <laughs> right now. I and can't relate to that. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. just such a charged like moment like after November 3rd this is going to be a different like problem but right now I'm I'm really trying to figure out how to sh sh enlighten people around me but right now all they see is like good guy, bad guy, like, and either which way you want to look at it is, it's a simplistic view on, on the world that needs to be expanded. And they are, and and they are think, I'm, I'm actually just decided earlier this morning, I'm going to put together like a presentation on censorship because above, above the, the divisive civil war going on, there is big tech censorship going on that like my in-laws are not aware of because they're the product of the manipulation of censorship. And so I'm gonna attempt to like bring this up and bring this to their attention so that they question the, the information that they are being handed. And I'm hoping that if I kind of expand the conversation to that, they can examine their choices below that themselves and come to their own start coming to their own conclusions because right now i can't even i, I can't even talk to them right now like uh, right but, but because you come from a position of defense like you're defending something and i'm saying let us go on the offensive that's all i'm saying let's change our mindset let us start come up with some questions that we are on the offensive i apply applied to my the current situation are <laughs> the the trust the level of trust and communication between us is so fragile right now that if i was to go on the on the offensive like it would further create the chasm between us. So that's not right. No, I, I I understand it won't be easy. That's why I'm throwing it out because I have the same problem. Like, how do I come up with questions that puts them on the defensive without making it worse? I'm on the that's same position. Why, exactly that's why the principles bridge that. When you have a conversation about principles and you say, listen, you know, everything that a government does with coercion and violence, we can do with voluntarism, we don't need that. So, you know, that's one of the principles. Why 
do we believe that one person can rule or own another person? If you make a claim upon a, a person's body or the fruits of their labor, if you tell them what they could put in their bodies, or if you think you can take a portion of their money, that's called slavery. Why would you condone slavery? You see, so it's the principles and the, that's the argument that you have with people without having a blow up. And you, know, you don't have to do that with, with aggression or with you know, um, just con confrontation. You can just have a, a polite discussion and say, you know, I don't believe in coercion and violence. And you, know, you have to point out to people that's what government is. They don't understand that inherently because they're brainwashed and they're hypnotized. So those arguments, those fundamental arguments, bringing them those principles help them to start to see the light without causing a lot of um, you know, arguments. And you can talk about the pedophiles and you can talk about you know, all of the imperialism and the totalitarianism and you know, history and all those things as references and they can start to get it depending on where they're at you know, but the inroad to person is always what they're having a personal issue with. Some people it's health, some people it's government, some people it's 9-11, some people it's going to be the, the masks, you know, but you got to kind of find out where they're already peeling up the corner themselves. And that's your inroad. Right. This, this is my challenge I have, Lila. Instead of using the word government, could we find because the, the word government is so sanitized. It's almost everybody thinks government is a good thing. Instead of using the word government, they say, okay, predators. Would that be too offensive? I'm saying the moment they mention government, people are saying, okay, he doesn't want a government. I'm saying, but governments are predators. Can we change the word? Can we find a better word than predators? Predator might be too offensive. But I'm saying, don't use government. Find another word that makes it look like that. what they are. They are predators who, are, who have been preying upon us. Just as almost like you want to explode the myth of government by not using their word. Coming back to the art of war, don't argue on their field. Take away that. That's almost like come up with a different word. I'm throwing it out, you know. This is a, something I've been thinking about since I joined the course. And I'm saying, this is how can we come up with a language that does blow the myth of government? Don't use that word. You know, that's just saying. We uh... don't hijack our words anyway. I think we have to defend. Well, it's still on the fancy. <laughs> well. I actually am trying to just, I was thinking for the past two days of the word for a free person, and I can't find one. There's not one in this language. What do you call a free person? It doesn't exist. A okay. sovereign, eh, not really, you know. On speaking to that just briefly, I know Jason wants to jump in there, is... Um, if you listen or you're aware of some of the native languages of the native people on different continents, right? Most of them, whether it's Lakota, Dakota, uh, Apache, uh, Anishinaabe, you know, Haudenosaunee, their word for themselves is people, the real people. And whenever you, that's what the, the meaning of within those languages are, right? So perhaps with English, that's an interesting question, Leah. Yeah, the, the, the best frame of reference for this conversation, I actually learned from Richard Grove. Uh, this is just a freedom versus slavery situation. And those words, they have weight, and they're, but they haven't really been hijacked to, to a, a degree where it triggers people. Because you can, you can boil it down to this simplistic this, uh, two, two points of, of reference and people can't like, it's a bit shocking to accuse someone of, of being pro-slavery, and but it, it's enough to get their attention without them uh, getting triggered and, and having the grammar hijacked so far. Well, and any of you familiar with Larkin Rose's Candles in the Dark seminar? Because that gets into the heart of this. What questions can you ask the people that you know that doesn't put them on the defensive and just kind of gets them looking introspectively at what their values are and how the things they do might not line up with their values that they think they have. I, I've, I've seen some good videos, but I haven't been able to practice the material, but it would be really great to have Larkin Rose as a guest speaker in autonomy and, and kind of share that for, for us to add to our, our knowledge set. And to bring this around full circle, 
this week in autonomy, uh, our integration exercises is to choose an argument that you wish to defend or uh, <laughs> go offensive <laughs> with and to go take it from this us just talking about this into the dojo rooms and practice and practice and practice and practice. Uh, take your real world situations. I got what I'm dealing with on, on my property and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be doing this right after uh, the, the call, collecting uh, evidence, collecting uh, supportive material and then organizing it and then picking somebody to do a role play in order to do some practicing before you like spring it on someone in the real world but just just get some experience because this is the skills that we're learning here in autonomy excellent idea excellent idea joshua that's what i would like us at the end of this come up with a template that says this is a pdf in terms of this is the questions we're going to ask we have tested it out on each other and said these questions can can trigger them to go on the defensive instead of we constantly on the defensive i that irritates me so much like we are defending freedom Freedom should need to be defended. Freedom is a given. And it's like, we are always on the defensive. Oh, he's weird. But that's an excellent idea. That's, that's why I brought it up. I want, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take up, I'm gonna take up that challenge. I'm gonna send it out and say, one-on-one. -on -one. I'm gonna do one-on-one -on -one in the dojo room with a couple of people. I see many people it. willing Bring to- Bring it on, bring it on. <laughs> Don't hold back, right? Cause the, no. the real world no. doesn't hold back. Right, right. These cameras and microphones and cell phones, they have many purposes. They are tools, remember. And so whether you are gonna record yourself as a way to review your able, ability to present this information, to practice your delivery, of course, it's gonna be depending on the rapport and as Leah mentioned, that particular person situation, how best to uh, build a bridge between the two of you, right? And uh, so, yeah, and then also too, as you said, on the offensive, taking your cell phone and recording individuals that maybe you want to have a, a, a highlight on, right? A local politician, a city council, right? I've gone to city council meetings oh, and I've interacted with that. mayors. I feel like talking to a politician is uh, being on the defenses from the, from the start because you are like, talking with someone who basically believes uh, slavery is okay and you're taking from that level i think like but recently i've had several people tell me that they would vote for me for city council and i was like what but uh, <laughs> upon like learning about it and um getting curious about it to be a watcher on the wall in my local area i would see would have a lot of vantage points to be able to see what's coming into my city uh, ph philosophically and, and, and mandates uh, to be able to uh, help influence and also, you know, warn my small little community, like, hey, this is coming down and, and it's in the pipeline and what can we do locally to, uh, to solidify ourselves? So I, I agree to a point, getting into politics is uh, a pointless, energy uh like you are working inside that that spell i think that this politics is, is a kind of spell yeah yeah it's and yeah i i the larger or the deeper you get into it i definitely agree with you because you you have to sacrifice your principles in order to uh to to gain position in it yeah and, 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 and so the, the challenge is that, that most people are just unaware that they are supporting predators Right. They are so ignorant of it. It's like, it's almost like, how do we get, I will point it to them, but I'm, I'm going to take up the challenge. I'm going to take up the challenge. Cool. Well, yeah, this is going to be a really exciting week in the dojo room. Feel free to jump in to any conversations that you see going on in there. And I do, I hope everybody records it for their own like education to be able to see themselves in action, but also post it up for other people to that didn't uh, get to watch it live. Cause this is where some really great, uh, material. I mean, we, we all strengthen our arguments when we hear really good arguments. So uh, yes. I look forward to, to seeing Can that. Can I um, just give yeah, you guys a, a tool? Uh, I've got, I, I have a great tool that I use. So a lot of times when, um, you know, trying to capture content, especially when it's, you know, being spoken, um, you know, I record it and then run it through um, an AI program like Otter AI online. 
So then it creates it into a text and you can, you know, just play it and, you know, either sometimes you got to correct a few words, but then you can export that into a Word document and there's the body of your uh, your content, just, you know, go ahead and edit it. But a lot for people, especially who are better at speaking than writing, doing it that way can be very um, advantageous. So can I you to type just... that uh, name of that program in chat? Yeah, oh, it's Otter AI. Okay. Otter AI, yeah. And you can get free accounts, you know. Yeah, I mean, That's a, it, that looks great. It's hey, really Gleiser, great. I would also like to give you an invitation to join the Atana Toasters meeting that's going to be later on today. Well, that's exactly oh, what's being practiced there. The presentation. I'm not a huge fan. Uh, <laughs> yes, send me a link I for that. And, and, yeah, they were preparing for uh, like defending the, themselves uh, in a parliament and stuff. So yeah, I think not not a huge fan of that. Well, it's still good to understand their language, it's even to to hope you never have to go there. But it's it's a good skill to be aware of. All right. Well, I really appreciate everyone's um, conversation. That is a serious topic and one that's going to be ongoing. And yeah, let's take this into the dojo room. Uh, now I'm going to kind of get back into a review of this last week. And uh, I am just blown away by Lawrence from Autonomy and his production skills, where he just put together, this is a promotional commercial for a client of ours, Content Safe, who you're about to see. Uh, and, and Lawrence is developing his portfolio and I'm gonna let it just speak for itself. You're a successful YouTuber and podcaster and big tech has been playing dirty with you and your friends for years. They've been getting nastier, removing videos, fake community standards, shadow banning your videos from your subscribers, removing subscribers without them even knowing about it and even taking down channels full-on censorship. Is your media team working to stop all of that nastiness? Are they distributing your content on alternative platforms that are censorship resistant? Are they monitoring all of your videos, channels, and subscribers to make sure your videos stay where you put them? Are they making sure your subscriber growth is consistent? Are people looking for you able to see your notifications and find you when they search for you? Does your media team have a plan to repopulate your videos on alternative channels if and when YouTube takes them down? Dude, do you even have a media team? Content Safe is your bodyguard that protects your work from the big tech giants who would rather see you silenced. Content Safe will distribute, monitor, and repopulate your content for you. Let your media team focus on helping you make killer videos and podcasts, best of clips, and eye popping graphics. Let Content Safe handle the rest. Visit contentsafe.co to learn how you can become censorship resistant and get your message out to the world. Yes. Super awesome to watch. Uh, so much got put into that. Sonia, uh, who, who, who just had a baby, she did the voice over. Um, and yeah, just to see it come from the copywriters writing the script to the voice acting, to then over to the media team. And Lawrence just took it and ran with it. And, and uh, I saw several versions of it. And it, it really got dialed in to where that thing is like pro. Well done. Yeah, great work, Lawrence. Hey, there you are. Whoop, whoop. Hey. All right, is, it, is it done? Are you washing your hands of it? Are you, are you uh, never going to open it again? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's there, although I need to swap out that version you just played. There, there's something I, yeah, so, you know, you know somebody, somebody, re uh, I don't know if somebody in here in this community recently said, uh, quoted Steven Spielberg, like a film, and of course, you know, I'm not, it's a, it's a short film. <laughs> no, a film is never uh, finished, it's, they're only abandoned, something like that, because yeah, it feels like I keep, keep working on that. Yeah. But thank you so much, Joshua, for your, your kind words. And I mean, it, it's amazing being a part of this community. This past year has been an amazing growth period for me. And I'm just blown away by the, the people that, that keep coming into this community. And the, the conversation over the past hour was fantastic. 
and as we're all leveling up the, this leveling up our own skills um this community is leveling up as a whole and it, it's it's really amazing to be a part of well said yeah well it's really great working with you lawrence it's been awesome to watch you like uh develop skills climb the ranks and now you're part of the production team and uh i get to rest assured that lawrence has got it covered and uh our friday night lectures have never looked better awesome lawrence, lawrence is also one of the backbones of the autonomy team that's helping us at what on earth is happening so thank you lawrence that was a great video thank you leah it's it's a pleasure to be working on that project. I think Tyler's Tyler's the main backbone. I'm like uh, I'm a solid rib, but I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm learning as much as I can. I mean, Keep you're up. all you're all backbones to me. <laughs> all all right. right. All right, let's keep this party train moving. This last week we had uh, the one room schoolhouse got started. And uh, this has been a long time coming. I'm just going to show a little clip and then Lee can, well, Lee, why don't you frame out what is the one room schoolhouse before I start this actually? Right. Um, <clears throat> a lot of us have had uh, some uh, time spent listening to the words uh, of uh, John Taylor Gatto when he was introduced, uh, interviewed by Richard Grove for uh, what uh, you've been missing and also his tragedy and hope channel. Um, linked to his tragedy uh, and hope.com website. And so uh, one of the things that he talked about or was discussed was uh, the ultimate history lesson was the frame put around his interview with John Taylor Gatto. And some of it, the discussion revolved around what was going on in the educational world or system before the system that we currently have. And one aspect of that is the one room schoolhouse where you had the teacher, you had students of various age groups or uh, grades, let's say, and perhaps the eldest students would be helping some of the uh, younger learners in that environment. And so that one teacher really could handle that situation and do a masterful job of promoting education in that local community. Nice. So we need something like that again. And yeah. there's a lot of interest, right? And people can say, relating it to this particular year, it's exploded, right? And it's gonna continue to advance. Mm -hmm. Uh, we put together, or uh, Adam and Lee organized a night this last week to kick this project off, and uh, they had Barbie Rivera, who is an um, uh, alternative educator in Florida, developing a K through eight curriculum that is free from the Common Core system and the uh, the distortion that has taken place in the last 70, 80 years of, of education. And she's actually drawing from these like tiny little uh, uh, education books from a hundred years ago when they had one room schoolhouses. And these kids, uh, she said, she's only developing her curriculum to eighth grade because the eighth graders know more than the high school kids do uh, today. So the, there's no need, like they can, they can, they can move on to, to more advanced studies. Um, so I got a little clip here ready to go. We'll just uh, showcase this and then, and then Lee can talk about what else took place. Um, and she was like, okay, I'm gonna get my foster license. Her and her husband, they started, they applied for the foster courses. And the way she calls it is Hurricane Andrew hit. The systems in Miami went down and she was mailed without taking a class her foster license. She goes, oh, well, this is a gift from God. So he was, Jose was two. You gotta love this lady. She's amazing. Uh, he was two and they brought him home for the holidays. And when Christmas was over, her husband says, so when do we take the baby back to the shelter? She goes, oh, we don't. He goes, what do you mean? She goes, we've adopted him. And he's like, didn't I need to sign something? She goes, oh, you did. <laughs> <laughs> now, this woman, I'm going to describe her. This is her to a T. She's extremely Christian, and she curses like a sailor. So I love her, you know. <laughs> anyway, she's like, in order to adopt Jose, now check out the insanity. She had to put him on Ritalin. Otherwise, the state wouldn't let her adopt him. 
And he was three years old on Ritalin. Three years old. So she took him and she's like, look, at the time when he was three, he wasn't walking. You know, they said all of these things. He would never walk. He would do this. And she would go to the physical therapy um, sessions and they go, no, he's not going to walk. She goes, do your effing job. And they would work with his body. And she goes, I had my other kids at home. We're working with his body. And we're like, you can do it, Jose. You can do it. Well, he walked. He talked. When he was 12, he wasn't reading. It was like maybe first grade. He had some letter recognition. He couldn't subtract five, take away two. Like the concept was foreign to him. Mind you, they're doing the crazy math where find the 10 and locate the three and all of the nonsense, right? So he was lost. And Louisa was like, I prayed to God for help because all I could do was yell at him like, Jose, you can do this. And I don't know why you don't understand this. And at the time I had just moved my school into the shopping center and I had a huge logo help on the wall. And she goes, oh, this is what God wanted me to do. So she brought, brought Jose in and I'm like, look, I have no guarantees that I can help him. I've never worked with the special needs, never gone to college. I have no training. This is out of, I'm homeschooling out of necessity, but I can guarantee you he won't get worse. And my daughter was 16 at the time, and she started Jose on kindergarten phonics, just phonics, letter sounds, small words, short vowel words. We did not focus on what he couldn't do. We focused on what he could do, made him look up, remember definitions of words. He had to look up the words or he had to know the words because he couldn't look them up yet. But if you have a word you don't understand. And he started making progress. And I remember the day that he came into my office. I remember it vividly. And he slammed a paper down. It was 100%. And it was seventh grade math. Fractions, decimals, percents, ratios, proportions, all of it. Now, it took like three of my personal children who were involved at the school at the time. They all worked with him one-on-one. And he had to do lessons over and over again because he has brain damage. But he himself was never, from us, we never told him he couldn't do it. The kid never missed a homework assignment. He worked at a grocery store. He also worked at IHOP. He had two jobs because he wanted it that much. And I'm going to tell you something. He graduated with a standard diploma, 100%. He did it. We I mean, obviously, I just want to be her, but he did it. And when he, you know, I'm small. Thankfully, he was my only graduate that year because whoever else would have graduated would have been overshadowed completely. And my little school was packed with family. And his mother got up and she's like, my family knows what I went through with him. When I adopted him, I was told not to adopt him because he was severely handicapped. I I was told he'd never walk. I'd never talk. He was on those horrible drugs, which after I found the school, I flushed them all. And then she found in his sock drawer that he had been stashing them because he didn't like the way he felt. So he wasn't (laughs) taking them anyway. Man, that lady has stories. So Bobby Rivera. That's a really good story. And uh, she, she also relates that she has a picture of him on the wall. And whenever she's talking to other students, she refers to him and points at the picture and says, that young boy, that boy, now a man, uh, came into this world with a damaged brain and he was able to succeed. You have no excuse. Um, so, you know, uh, it, it's great. And uh, she's a huge resource and a really good model for someone like myself. I've been teaching for about 19 years. Uh, teaching English in Taiwan, but I've been through all different types of, I've taught in the public school system. I've taught at do, uh, every, every job description, every type of uh, way of life or, uh, you know, age group I've, I've taught, but I've, I got a lot to learn from her and I think her approach is really good. So awesome. Really looking forward to working with her. Well, I'm excited to see the autonomy one room schoolhouse continue to uh, evolve. And uh, in two weeks, we just secured a uh, guest speaker, Lioness, who uh, had a little guest appearance here in autonomy the last week. She uh, has a fantastic story of taking her kid out of school when he was seven because she didn't like seeing the results. 
and she learned uh, all about unschooling and, and self-directed education. And now her kids like pursuing physics in college and-, and Yes, he's a she, physicist. He yeah. still asks her for some help with uh, his work and she's like, I'll do my best. <laughs> I don't know if I can, right? It's yeah. great. Yeah. So uh, yeah, look, look for that in the, on the calendar. It's gonna be Tuesday uh, the 10th, I believe. Um, so that's going to be really great. And we're just going to continue to evolve and develop uh, this uh, curriculum for the next generation because it's needed, like more than ever it's needed. I have a two-year-old, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hyper aware of what's, what's coming up in her future. And I'm so thankful to have the resources here uh, in autonomy. Yeah, she says, um, she says, she says it's not enough. So I, I asked her, what do you mean exactly by that? She said, I have 80 students here, but that's only 80 students within one city. It's helpmiami.org. It's her, her organization down there. She's the principal now. She's, not, she's doing less teaching, right? And she's like, but it's everyone, all the students in the United States. And I'm like, yeah, and it, it's global. It's planetary wide, right? So there's a lot that, of people, students and parents too, that need help, right, in a good way. Yeah. Well, I want to showcase a little uh, compliment that we got from uh, a new student, Deborah. She uh, is uh, new to autonomy, but now I just had a like wonderful conversation with her and we're going to be helping out her business uh, with Autonomy Unlimited. And uh, this is a little clip from last Sunday that I wanted to, to showcase and we'll talk about it afterwards. It's all hey, I'm rich. Find your stuff. Um, I just wanted to say to um, Autonomy Unlimited um, that your P&L statement and all that, that is, is very impressive. Uh, you were talking about that uh, at the lecture, just like sharing, like, like that, that, that's incredible. I, I, li you, I literally was speechless, not that, you know, I talk while, you know, I'm listening, but I, I know that my, my mouth dropped at very incredible. So you guys have a great thing going. Like I have to tell you that, but your numbers are great. Wow. wow. Yeah, I mean, we can we can bid a bunch of jobs and take people's, you know, uh, start their project. But to be able to complete it, it takes graduates of this course and their freelance skills and their culture of excellence to make everything go. And um, I was pleased to see that it wasn't like twenty thousand dollars in the red, and we there was like it was in the black, and it was not in the black by much, but it doesn't have to be. Like I'm, I'm like I just I want it to be there as a next, next like a, it's almost like a halfway house from schooling. It's like you're getting out of this course, you're trying out your skills in the real world. Here's a sheltered place where we kind of take care of a lot of overhead and things like that, and put deals in front of you, and you can take it or not, and this sort of thing. It's a much needed intermediary station that shelters people on their way to success. And some can be there long-term and some can just get their skills together and go make their offer and get their own clients and do their own thing. And that's cool. So it's an option area. Shelter. Great model. Yeah. Great model. Yeah. I have another thought on that. Super great. So this last week we got our PL statement. What is a p &L? It's a profit and loss statement. It's the first time I've ever had one in any of my businesses. We're working with Robbie Leveu, uh, who is a autonomy graduate, and he is helping us out with accounting. Uh, he offers financial uh, foundation uh, service, and we're, we're, we're helping him out with developing his own um, uh, solopreneur business. And so He's helping out Autonomy Unlimited, getting our books in order, teaching me how to be able to reconcile everything coming and going. And uh, he just, yeah, did our first like yearly report. We're only 10, uh, almost 11 months old now of a business. And we just cr uh, crossed 100,000 in, in gross revenue, uh, which is fantastic for our first year. And like he said, we're in the black, which means uh, we've, brought in more money than we've spent, not by a lot, but uh, this first year of growth and, and takes just a huge amount of investment, time, resources, training. Uh, and uh, we've, we've been able to pay out 70,000 in revenue to our contractors, our freelancers, our Autonomy Unlimited students and graduates. Everybody in Autonomy Unlimited has gone through the course or currently is going through the course. 
So we all work and live, uh, work in a, uh, in a culture of excellence. So very special environment. And to go back to what I said earlier about it being a, a voluntary uh, work zone where we are helping small businesses and projects and, and influencers uh, to, uh, to help, help their businesses um, succeed in a voluntarily way. Nobody's there that doesn't want to be there. And so it just creates this like really synergistic and positive environment where we all just get to find creative outlets for our, our, our skills. And it's just, yeah, a real pleasure to be a, be, be a part of. So that was very kind of what Deborah had to say. And uh, yeah, we're, we're going to be working on with her closely on her business to help optimize what she's got going on. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited about that too. I really like her. She's very excited. I was in the copywriting team, uh, Kara's uh, meeting uh, group, which she's the captain of. And she mentioned, uh, like you said, uh, Robbie, his, his uh, business is going to be launched as Emergent, right? They're working with him. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's a good project. And also Deborah was saying, like I was throwing like, out a challenge, like, give me your best copywriting team. Let's see what you got. Right, and uh, you know she wants some boom, and definitely the copywriting team is capable of boom, right? As you can see by the output, right, and the work that they've done with Autonomy Unlimited and Autonomy. Joshua, yep. where would you point someone who wants to learn more about where uh, Autonomy and Autonomy Unlimited is going in the next year? AutonomyLimited.com is up and functioning. Uh, we're going to be re, re, redesigning the website. So it has a lot more content and substance to it. But right now there's a form on the bottom of the page. You can fill out that form and get on a discovery call with me and the team where we'll go over your project and talk about your next steps. You can just walk away after that with, uh, with our, with, the, the, the plan of engagement that we give you, or you can decide to work with a team who has a culture of excellence. And uh, we, we coined ourselves as uh, where ethical marketing meets integrity. So if that sounds interesting uh, to work with, then get on our schedule. Yeah, what my, my question would be uh, for someone who wants to learn more on uh, where you want to expand as a, as a company. I didn't hear that last part, but in order to work with, to work in Autonomy Unlimited, is that what you said? No, no. I, I mean, um, like your vision for the, for the company goals for, for the upcoming We just, uh, Robbie actually just gave us like kind of uh, some five-year questions that we're going to be going over next week to uh, go over our mission and yeah, where we want to see ourselves. Uh, in the future, but like we built this thing to be able to scale and we have like an amazing apprenticeship program. And so uh, the more work we get, the more we can help others sharpen their skills and turn into professionals. So I'm really excited to see like where this thing goes after this. Okay, fair enough. Cool. Well, I'm glad you're on the team and uh, working alongside us, Luger. Thank you. Lee, you want to talk about this? We have probably just a few minutes to kind of cover this powerful slide that was in Friday night's lecture. Uh, this thing really, I hope, solidified what reality is for each of us individually and how to interact with one another. Lee, what did you find most inspiring about this? I often remind myself and other people I, have, I speak with that there's a lot going on with every individual human being. And so we really can benefit from having a framework for our understanding and interactions with the reality of being a human being, whether that's man, woman, or child, right? And so during this particular uh, slide, Richard was describing it very well. And I found, I really like this lecture. In fact, out of the five weeks, I would say that this particular lecture, week, this week, uh, week number five, I, I would say is, is my best, the one I like the most so far. And we also, there was some also, some really good input from um, speakers. We could call them guest speakers, right? We talked about the vulnerabilities of a human being as an infant compared to how a, a male or, or let's say a, 
a mature body, we're able to defend ourselves and adapt and human beings are able to live in any environment on this planet, literally the bottom of the ocean, wet or cold deserts. Yeah. And part of that is directed, related to our thinking processes, right? <laughs> Highly related to that. Lost I your sound, Joshua. Yeah, and, and I mean, it's the foundation. I wasn't taught this. I had to like learn about this in the last few years and it allowed me to have a firm footing on not only what I, how my, the framework of my brain is so that I can take in data information, organize it, process it, and then share it with others, but also like how we can all, um, like what really helped me out was, <clears throat> I, I believe in things outside of the five senses that, that and, and so, <clears throat> In this framework, we're allowed to uh, add that non-sensory data to our observations, but I know better than to try and convince you of, uh, of what I'm experiencing outside of the five sensories because you, it doesn't translate. Like you, you can't experience that same thing that, that I am, but we can still talk about it with this framework because uh, we, we can talk about objection, objective reality and subjective reality. And so just being able to frame the data as you're able to uh, share that experience with others in that way doesn't confuse and muddy the transmission of the information. You're able to organize it correctly so that it's received correctly. And, and, and with that comes intellectual self-defense, right? Once you're able to understand the difference between objective and subjective, then you're able to keep a lookout on muddied, damaged data coming at you. And not all topics are equal in their challenging, uh, <laughs> the challenge presented by communicating or discussing them, right? And so these frameworks are really useful. Anybody else on the call have any like highlights that they want to talk about from last night? Anything that stood out from you? Because it, it was, it was meaty. This is my fourth time listening to this same uh, lecture. It's different every time because Richard has his own uh, growth and experiences to share different perspectives throughout it. So uh, it's always great to, to kind of hear it just a little bit differently, but also, man, there's just so much meat on last, on last night's presentation. I know you're everybody's so just processing. Fun. Still processing. What stood out for me was that the founder uh, has had a uh, birthday, so that was really exciting uh, to be able to 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 celebrate it uh, online with him. And uh, yeah, Great. that was super exciting. So Richard had a birthday while giving the lecture. And so it hit midnight and we all got to con congratulate him. That's what's uh, right behind Lee's, Lee right now is a, a special message to uh, Richard Grove. Happy birthday again, it's still his birthday today. He got to wake up and pretty much have two birthdays. He's getting set up for uh, uh, having some friends and family over. And uh, yeah, it's a real honor to share his birthday with him virtually at least. Oh, right Ooh. on. Uh, you know, I think, oh, there he goes. Look at that. Nice. And then we're setting up the camping out here in the back. Yeah. Oh, so that's great. Early activities. There'll be fire, cool lights, good food, good Grove. celebration of life. Grove Fest 2020. <laughs> nice. All That's right, a yeah, big take. Yeah. So. Yeah, the big take away for me, Joshua, was um, the 10,000 hour meet. Say that again. The big takeaway for me was the 10,000 hour meet. Oh. We don't yeah. need 10,000 hours to learn a skill. Right. That was a real big takeaway for me. Like, and when I talked about it, after Richard spoke about it, I said, yes, he's right. You just need 20 concentrated hours from somebody who knows yeah. what they're doing. Yeah, that's very but important. It's, 
It was a myth. It is a myth. I think that myth yeah. needs to be blown up, but I got it last night. That was a big takeaway for me. Right. Yeah. Uh, it, it is shocking to hear, right? Because um, it, it is. It's a misconception that we're all like, you know, oh, man, I'd love to be a pro basketball player someday. But and you just like have these these uh, like like dreams of all these heroes that were like uh, uh, when when we're being raised in, in this like c- celebrity society, all these like unattainable positions are presented to you and like, I want to be Michael Jordan. And, and you don't really see all the little steps it took to become Michael Jordan. He just got really good at, at doing what he could. So, and to, to be given permission that you can learn anything uh, and it doesn't take a whole lot of time just to gain some proficiency and you can, you can continue to grow and develop that skill, but you can at least learn little things like relatively easy with that permission. And uh, I, what I heard this time that I didn't sink in last time was just understanding the methods of quickly learning things. Uh, and and, and I, I do this naturally now, but it's, it's good to refresh to be like, okay, what's the grammar? What do I need to know? What are the basics? And then go and try, go do it, just do it. And then like hit a roadblock, back up, know yourself, Go grab some more data, more information, come back, try again. Boom, you make a little bit of progress and just go uh, step by step like that. Yeah, exactly. And just deprogram your mind that failure is not an option. Failure is not even a language you should use. Failure is a made up, again, language by <laughs> just to keep us in check. But Yeah, and getting the quality of information. And that's what uh, autonomy is here for, to provide a as uh, the best of the best. Right, right, right. Yep, that was part of the presentation also as well, that particular lecture, that community charges your battery, right? You know, of course, there's also rest and, you know, proper health and nutrition involved, right? But the particular benefit of being and interacting with a great group of people, so necessary. I totally get that point. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining me today. We had a nice full house uh, on our podcast. My name, uh, that's it for this week's episode of Do It Live Autonomy Podcast. We're going to be uh, doing this each week as the season goes on. So I hope you join us, join the conversation. And uh, this next week, we got some exciting, uh, exciting new things on the horizon. I don't see any guest speakers this week, but we got something going on every day with all the uh, student projects and podcasts going on. So check the calendar for uh, to, to jump in live. We're going to be doing Q&A tomorrow morning uh, a little bit later. So Rich can catch up on some sleep after his uh, after Grove Fest 2020. And uh, we'll be able to see you all there. Make sure to like, subscribe, uh, or uh, or just download these things, right? Download these things for hard copies on your hard drives before they get disappeared on the internet. But make sure to tune with us into us next week as we go into week six of, uh, of autonomy. And um, if you want to get autonomy for yourself, go to getautonomy.info uh, and you can grab our new... 19 essential skills not taught in school uh, by going to getautonomy.info backslash 19 skills. It's got a ton of valuable information, resources there to get you started. And then, uh, yeah, follow the, the, the call to actions on there and you can get on a call with Richard and talk to him about your future and how autonomy can help you. Thanks everybody for joining us and we'll see you guys in the dojo room.